What's happening, Shutter Nation? Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday night, and this I am the head of the ER Shred Board, Heather Sika Leonard, coming to you live on this Tuesday night with episode number 74 of Shred Your Body. Can you believe that we have 74 episodes? I am so excited to be here tonight filling in for our nutrition ambassador, Jesse James Jamnick, who will be returning to us next week. So you're stuck with me for one more week. And I am excited because I get to bring in one of our shredders, Miss Carolyn Davis, who's going to be sharing her story with us tonight. Hello. Hello there. Oh. Hi. Welcome to Shred Your Body. Thank you so much. <laughs> and before we even get into your story, I want to pause for a moment and say, on behalf of the board, on behalf of the community, thank you for coming live with us tonight and sharing your story. I know I was watching your posts and what you were sharing in the community, um, and I reached out to you to share, and you were a little hesitant at first because I know it's not easy being in the spotlight. It's not easy being on these calls I know it's different for me because my experience is being an educator. I'm always in front of people and on a stage. That's how I grew up. Um, but to be vulnerable and authentic and willing to come on this because we know the power of stories. So I wanted to say thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Thank you. I am very honored to be invited to be here tonight. And I really appreciate you um, asking me the questions that helped me to realize that it is important to be and right. And that, and that question is, who's who can hear your story that you might be able to reach that's feeling the way you felt? Right. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Isn't that, isn't that always the question that we ask? That is the question. And, and like I was telling you before we before we went live here, um, you know, when you asked me who else might benefit from hearing your story, I flashed back to the, you know, what led me, what drew me, attracted me into ER Shred community in the first place and connecting with Sean's story and connecting with Lenny and yeah. Yeah. That's connecting with Sean's story and watching his journey as he was finding his way to find the protocol even. Right. Like his story started before ER Shred did and hearing, hearing his journey right. was, was definitely the authenticity and the vulnerability that he shared with us on his right. journey, on his way to find ER Shred, right. is is part of why I've always followed Sean and Crystal. Their stories have always been that way. And I think that's part of why I'm as open as I am with our community, is we are led by those who share their stories and they're vulnerable, and our community right. embraces that, and they support that, and they love that. Um, so, so that our community is fantastic that way yeah no kidding it really no. is it's super special it's, it means a lot to me yeah it's it's not it's unlike any other community i've seen it really is yeah and it's hard i ask myself all the time because i've been in a lot of communities what is it it's like this intangible sort of magnetic attraction and i i think resonance is the is the thing for me you know and i just was actually thinking about it a while ago too you know that for me, uh, one of the things that really, really appeals to me a lot about this community is the balance of male, female energy, having some men involved, whereas my experience up until being a part of this community was very female dominant. And it's great. You know, there's so much love and nurturing and there's so much good about, um, you know, girlfriends. <laughs> but it, it has never felt as balanced as this does. And there's just so much um, strength in that. And I really appreciate it. It means a lot to I, me that, that there are guys here. <laughs> I love that observation. Yeah. That's, That's just, just one thing. But but um, I know that I had been looking for that. I had been wanting, you know, as a budding leader in my, in my group previously, really wanting to try and um, incorporate more um, of that sort of energy into what we were doing. And it just, it just wasn't really, that wasn't a shared um, idea really. Yeah. So everything in its own time. <laughs> exactly. I'm more thought to you, right? Isn't that, isn't that the lingo we've been learning? So where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from San Diego, California. 
How's the weather over there? Because it's chilly over here. Couldn't be more perfect. And you were and you're where? I'm in Connecticut. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Coast and to coast. Yeah, I don't you <laughs> love that? And yeah, I think that's fun. another thing with our community is we are coast to coast and we don't feel that distance. Yeah. It's a real it's a really, really, really special community, no no question. So it's tell part us, of what keeps me here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your bio shared a lot of information. So what is it in your bio you want to share? With from before your shred journey, um, I guess from before my shred journey, just that I've been doing this. I, I mean, I've been using these products, not this particular protocol, but these products for 15 years really successfully. So, my pre shred story is I felt good, I felt uh, not you know, not as good as I do now for sure. But my story before I ever started using these products was the same. I thought I felt good until I unlocked this whole new way of doing things with, with the products prior to the shred. And it was like night and day. I didn't know how good it felt to feel good because I didn't know that feeling the way I felt before wasn't the best I could feel. And then, and then along came ER shred and it's just as extraordinary at the next level it's just like one more key to one more you know treasure chest of vitality and well-being so it hasn't been such a big weight journey for me um ever really it's been more um empowering me to feel in control of my well-being more and as i'm aging i'm 60 now and i, I was 59 when i discovered this and i was starting to do a little weird thing in my mind um, about aging, you know, starting to give myself a little more leeway to kind of just feel average because there's so much programming around, oh, it's your age and oh, you're getting older. And, you know, I have to say, discovering this just before turning 60, wow, what an amazing, um, liberating um, youthifying. <laughs> youthifying. Uh, I love that word. It's, yeah, it's, that's what it feels like. I mean, I really feel like over the last year and a half between doing the shred and a couple of the other things that I've added into my regimen, I really feel like I'm not only arresting the aging process, but, but re reversing is kind of a weird word, but definitely enhancing it, you know? It's definitely enhancing it. I mean, for me, you know, a lot of a lot of people are throwing away their scales or shattering their scales. And I think that's so cool. I've never really had um, that much of a negative relationship with the scale, although I can see how that one main number can do a mind trip. But I have a body composition scale that's actually my accountability partner because I'm the only one in my household that's doing this and being able to see numbers like visceral fat going down, which is very health, you know, related. Um, and, and being able to see bone density and muscle mass and BMI, you know, those things are really fun. And I, I have fun watching the tweak between when I'm doing what I know is the best thing to do. And when I'm not, I find that I don't get on the scale regularly when I'm not doing what I like to be doing. Um, because it actually motivates me to stick with it because it's fun. It's like a game for me. And it, and I rarely look at the pounds as, you know, my, my measure. I look at the little fine tuning details. So ER shred for me is very much about fine tuning and staying strong as I move into, you know, my third act of my life because muscle loss, sar uh, is it, sar no, not, sar what do they call it? Sarcopenia. I guess, is when you start to lose mus uh, muscle mass and um, bone density, those things that naturally start to, um, for some people, not us, obviously, but start to, you know, reduce and be an issue as you get older, it has only been going in the right direction for me since. So there's a few things there that I want, I want to dip into. First one I want to dip into is I, I love how you are saying you, you are energizing and, and embracing and enhancing, enhancing was the word you used. Sorry, my, my middle school brain <laughs> fried. Um, enhancing <laughs> the aging, right? Yes. I love that. So 
why do you think it's important for people to embrace that? What do you think is out there? And that's the mindset of somebody who's at that 59 turning 60, you know, that bridge. I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot out there. What do you think it is? And what, what do you want to say to those people? It just, it's a, I think, I think society gives, gives us an excuse things up to aging. Aging doesn't have to mean feeling weaker or feeling heavier or feeling sicker or feeling tired or less energetic. It's, um, and, and something that's really big and really important to me is our language. One of the things that I've learned through the training um, for the RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy um, certification that I got a couple of years ago, is that your cells, our cells out there to prove this, We're telling ourselves and the beliefs that we have really impact how our cells respond to whatever that, whatever we're doing. And, and an, a real aha moment for me, a light bulb moment for me that came prior to uh, starting the ER shred was um, I had concurrent with the beginning of the lockdown and, you know, changing and contracting with what was going on, you know, in our world um, a couple of years back. I had decided when I started to feel my mindset going down kind of a sad place, I decided I'm not doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I don't, I don't, you know, give in to that. And I started walking, I upped my walking regimen and started walking a lot more every day and started doing some planking and some push ups and some little challenges and stuff. And just getting out bed every morning made all the difference for me. But one morning I got up the bathroom that had didn't turn remember just kind of catching a little sideways glance body and seeing a lot of pain sighting recognizing it's working and my body and my efforts in a way that shifted the energy around what I was doing rather than doing it for any, you know, negative reasons, I realize I'm doing this because I, I'm grateful for a healthy body. Sounds like kind of a little bit of internet shift. It, it was like a whole new platform for me moving forward, doing body from a place of love and appreciation. I love that. So what, what is the, it's RTT you said? It's RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy. And the cool, one of the cool things that happened today as I was, I was in my walk this morning, I realized RTT, it's, it, it, but what it does, actually, we get to the root cause of an issue and we look at it, understand it, eliminate it, and reset my goodness. So it's kind of a mindset shred. <laughs> it's a shred your body, it's a shred your mindset sort of pro protocol that's been amazing for me and so many of my clients. But isn't that also part of what we see people go through on their journey that the elimination reset, it starts with the body, but have you noticed as you see people in the group keep showing up? Yes, yes. Yeah, and so I, I want, absolutely feel that. And I want to speak on behalf of the board because head of the board, I get to put words in their mouths, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> any of that training tips and tricks that you want to share with us, we we as a community would welcome that with open arms because like you said, it's another part of it. So anything you want to share with us, any guides you want to give us around that, I'm sure we would we would love it. That's one of the things that we love about this community is as we dig in and start to get to know people and they, they're able to share with us what they're passionate about and what they're, they're trained in. We're, we're open to anything people want to give us. You don't have to be ahead of the board or on the board Fun, or yeah. to, to bring it. So we would, we would love to have some more around that or who even did a separate call for just that. Great. So 
Yeah, sure. I'm, That'd be awesome. You know, it's it's powerful stuff. Hand in hand. Yeah. And and I, I do believe that goes hand in hand with what we've been tackling with our nutrition. So um please, any anything you've got for us. So I, the other thing I like is you said you don't look at the pounds very often, right? I don't. When you look at your scale, you look at so many numbers. And if, if you have been watching lately, there are some people who get stuck on like one or two numbers. And I think what's important, and I want to reiterate in what you shared, is that one or two numbers don't tell your story. When you're looking at you know, the visceral age, the metabolic age, the, the visceral fat percentage, the body mass, all of those components mm -hmm. tell a bigger picture. Right. So I agree Very with true. you. That's the, the, the gravity reader one that I have. That's the one I shattered. <laughs> because that Absolutely one get it. had power over me. It didn't tell me the rest of the story. Right. And so if you're not really right. looking at it with an open mind that, oh my goodness, I'm not just defined by my pounds. I have all of these other components with it. Then you're willing to put the puzzle together. That's a different scale than the one that I destroyed. Now, word of advice for those of you who are ready to smash those gravity reader scales. Put something down because glass shatters everywhere <laughs> oh no oh no, God, no, was, no, right? no it took me a while. just took me a while so my oh, advice no. would be like smashing it over because i don't know if you saw i like shattered it over a rock i did and it looked like fun <laughs> it was but oh it was gosh. very therapeutic it was wonderful yeah but the cleanup wasn't so fun so that's just my yeah. advice for those of you that take on the smasher scale challenge just be mindful of what a cleanup might look like, right? So good you advice. found it was it was uh it's all good. All good. It's been handled. Uh, <laughs> you joined our partner company 15 years ago. What was your nutrition like before that? And what made you jump in to try to try that spot? Well, funny you ask, my nutrition was decent because I had Actually, um, when I was 30 years old, my life ago now, I can't even, it's been that long. I got, I left a, a sort of a corporate career and I moved away to a ski resort and I got a job as a waitress. <laughs> and I, as a waitress in a ski resort was a, because lots of people come bring their germs there. And I was really, really sick. My Enter and um, a friend of mine who actually happens to be my now at the time said, You know, I have stuff in my cabinet you should try. And it was a nutritional chick program that I said, Okay, he wasn't using it, but I'll try it. And I started making self a shake every morning. They were soy based at the time, but even that was a believe it or not was a really big up for me to start my day with a, a shake at the time we thought was healthy. Um, another one thing like that took me to a higher level. Prior to that, I hadn't really been very conscious of what I ate. I ate whatever, lots of cheap, you know, lots of, you know, just average basic food. But I started to be aware of and that got me going down the path of what I actually went through um, a holistic health pro program the books did all this work never got the certification because I learned so that was really all um, I you know really learned that that was the difference between not feeling good and feeling good and I did that for many, many years came on until, until Isa Chance came along. And that was a huge, you know, huge upgrade because I often started doing cleansing, which getting the bad stuff out and putting the good stuff in, there's a lot of power in that. Um, and 
I so eat. I, I have to say, doing doing the protocol before ER shred, it actually I felt like it liberated me to eat what I wanted, in essence, because what I wanted changed, and it was balance restoring all the time. You know, I could always just come back around, do a cleanse, have my two shakes a day, which I've done at least one shake a day, if not two, most days for 15 years. So I was pretty well nourished all along. But so the way you were, I wasn't I focusing on red meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, because that's not what you were taught. So balancing things, I love, I love I that language, and that language makes me go back to something I heard that you have holistic, a holistic training in your background. You didn't go for the certification, but all right, I did all the coursework. There was, you know, there's something right at the end. And I just, I just was like, okay, well, and that school has since closed down, but I learned so much and I have a huge life, you know, great things that I learned. It's like science today. Science is always changing, right? I mean, because it's an evolving information. And so you can't hang your hat on what they thought was true 30 years ago. It's always some, there's always something new, like learning that red meat and grain, which was the bottom of the food pyramid I was growing. You know, you had to have more of that than anything. Yeah, now I have way more butter than I have now brown. grain. <laughs> it's like we just started that whole, right? That's exactly what we did. So what is it that drew you to even want to study the holistic training? I really, really liked feeling good. And I really wanted to understand. I really wanted to understand more about, um, you know, I grew up sickly. I grew up not feeling good. I grew up being sick. Nothing. I know I didn't have any life threatening diseases or anything, but I just always had something going on with my health as a kid. And, um, you know, one of the things I, I think I said in my bio was that I learned as I started doing this training that I've done recently, I learned that as a kid, if I was sick, my mom, who was really busy, that's when I got attention and love. So for myself and through my family, is my family is very much hanging, a lot of people in my family kind of hang their identity on their health challenges. I learned that I wanted to, I wanted my identity to be vibrantly healthy, not sickly. And so we eradicated that one. <laughs> so you flipped your language. I did. Well, that's another another piece that I've learned. And here's a little tidbit that I think can maybe benefit other people the way it's benefited me. Whatever, whatever words follow I am when you're speaking about yourself, they're your creative power for creating who you intend to be. If you say, I am fat, and if yourself is doing what it thinks you want it to do, your body is going to go to work holding on to fat. You know, if you want to be vibrantly healthy, call yourself vibrantly healthy and watch what happens. Like that moment in the shadows that morning when I walked into the bathroom and said, I'm lean and strong. You know, this is working. The magic started to happen from that point moving forward. What we declare about ourselves it doesn't have to be 100% true in the moment, but we have to, I believe, if we want change, we have to know what that change is and we have to claim it for ourselves. And we have to love ourselves to be able to give ourselves that in the first place. And for me, getting to that point of self really more self acceptance. Um, has been on me. So yeah, in the language, words carry energy. Words carry power. So 
use ourselves when we talk about ourselves and when we people, you know, as an educator, you know, if little children understood this, <laughs> if children understood the power of their words, starting when they were really young, their lives would be so much easier, much more empowered, you know, so that's been a really big aha for me. Words are what we feed our mind, just like it's what we feed our body, and they all work together. And I think that's a big part of the magic of ER Shred, getting the bad stuff out, putting the good stuff in, get the, the disempowering language out, replace it with the empowering words. Get the disempowering And then start focusing on those empowering words. I have a little exercise that I... Are you there? I, you're okay. You went, you went frozen for a second. Um, yeah, I, there's I, a little I, exercise I, that I have I, my I, clients I, I, do, I, I, and, and this is super here. simple and it only took a second. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me okay now? There's a contrast. Think you and you take, a take a piece of paper. Take a piece of paper, okay? Take a piece of paper. And if there's something in your life that you want to change, Mm yourself -hmm. what is all right i am losing you again i don't know what happened oh. i know you said i was freezing and now i see you freezing so we'll give it a minute this is technology in 2022 we're used to it right remote <laughs> teaching Remote teaching has been my life. It's like, are you there? Are you still there? All right. So I got my piece of paper. What am I doing? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> I can hear okay. you now. And I paper. Okay. On the left side of the page, that's going to be your contrast list. Contrast okay. is the what you don't want. So if you're describing whatever it is in your life that you want to change, make a list of the adjectives that describe what you don't want. So let's just say, for example, since it's ER shred and since so often it's about weight. Um, this is just for the sake of the example. Um, let's just say, for example, fat or fluffy or tired or low energy or depressed. You know, you can list these adjecti adjectives that describe the state that you're in. And it's go there just long enough to get to define it. Because what we're going to do on the clarity side is for each one of those items, you invert it, you turn it inside out, and you list how you want it to be. So we could say, for example, I said was fat. You really wants to be skinny, I don't think, but lean is a good, healthy word. For, you know, um, if if it was depressed, I want to be joyful or I whatever they are. You know, everyone has their own list, but but we do ultimately. You know, our brains are hardwired to focus on the negative, you know, survival mechanism you don't like because you want to avoid it. Unfortunately, we get stuck in the negative so often and we repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. I'm so bad. I'm so, my, I have my on tops or, you know, all these things, you know, rather than saying I'm, I'm getting better, you know, I'm lean, you know, and so what you do after you make your both lists and you have a positive for each of those negatives, just fold the paper in half and shred literally the left side of the page and every day focus on these positives and there you get your affirmations. And if you focus on those, read them and really put the emotional energy into each one of them and practice feeling the emotion, fake it till you make it and, and just let your heart go there into what does it feel like to myself lean or to see myself happy and vibrant vibrantly healthy and you really can learn how to change your emotional state 21 days of doing anything creates a new habit and so if you look at that and practice those feelings every day it can be meditation practice for five minutes 
and you will begin to embody them. You know, your, your brain literally creates new neural pathways around this new way of being and seeing yourself and it works. I love that. I think that's a great challenge um, for people to do. So I, I think we need to do a post about that to, to give those directions to people because I think I think that's got a lot of power. We can do that. <laughs> I would love that. Well, it I, definitely does. It's, I made my notes. Good. And then you just, or you're rid of that negative. <laughs> and then we just shred it. You can it, shred it, put it in the shredder. You can burn it. You can ball it up, throw it away. You can have a ritual that, that releases that bad stuff out. <laughs> So do you feel that this journey started because of how you were feeling and the, 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 the sicknesses that you were experiencing as a child? Do you think that guided your journey down that path or like take us, take us back to that? I think, um, yeah, I do. I think that. Um, you know, all the way back, um, there were, there were things, as I alluded to in my little, in the introduction, there were things that were happening in my life that were very disempowering and I felt invisible. I wanted to be invisible and yet I want to be loved and I wanted to be appreciated. And there was a situation going on in my family that, um, occurred over years as a girl between closest and church members of my family. My family. Never knew what was going on, but, ever, but, but most of the time when our family were together, we had a giant farm and there was lots of space and lots of freedom. Older teenage boys who, you know, took advantage of a little girl on an ongoing basis. So, you know, that's really foundational stuff. It's not who I am. It's something that happened. But for a long time, it shaped who I felt like I was. And that's a big thing to release and, and let go of and move on from. And, um, you know, beliefs are formed those years throughout our life. And sometimes, most often, they're, they're subconscious beliefs. And being able to go in there and discover were what of them was understand and look at them and recognize that's not who I am anymore. I'm not four years old anymore. I'm not, you know, at someone else's mercy. I'm in charge. I'm making the decisions. And then, you know, transform those beliefs to the opposite. I am powerful. I am in charge of my life. I am making calling my own shots, you know. I do have boundaries. I can have healthy boundaries. I can feel good about myself. I don't have to look a certain way to be loved because I can give myself love looking however I look when I get up in the morning or, you know, at my worst. I can still love myself and recognize I am enough just the way I am. And that's been that's been the biggest thing. You know, the three our our mentor in this training that I went through, she says the three most powerful words in the in our language are let it go and let go and put something else in place that that's what you choose um it's really transformational stuff and the gear shred is is a physical example of of that and it all like you're saying earlier all comes up into um clarity and um insights and every time i every time i cleanse it's just like my brain is is so alive and so receptive and so insightful and it's just like a celebration in there you know it feels so good to be clear and clean but yeah all i think all of those things you know feeling sickly all of that um being able to get love and attention you know when my mom was so busy with everything else it was like And I think part of that is is learned behaviors from kids that they're going to do what they can to get the attention. Um, I thank you for sharing that. That was a lot to put out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that you have found your journey 
that that's not defining who you are. It happened and it's not who you are anymore. And you have been able to come out of that so much stronger. So again, I want to, I can't even imagine, but thank you for sharing that. Cause, because that's a lot. Um, in the language, it's so, we are not defined by what happened to us, right? Not if we choose not to be, you know, not if we can, not if we can wake up the fact that, you know, bad things happen to everybody. And we all have our stories and we all have our, you know, like we're a walking sack of, of beliefs and memories and, and thoughts and words and, and um, at any point, awareness can happen or we can choose when we take responsibility for our journey, not that I'm responsible for what happened to me, can take responsibility now for how I see it and where I put it, you know. Um, and, you know, a friend once said to me, that's just strong, <laughs> right? You know, you can, you can turn challenges into strengths by looking at them a different way and by recognizing that they show you things about yourself and things about life and things about other people, you know, um, I, you I've come up with a term called, uh, detachment. What is happening with other people as an empath, this really serves me a lot. I don't know how many empaths are out there, but discovering that that was, a part of who I am and recognizing that it doesn't have to be a curse to feel what other people feel, but to recognize that it deepens my intuition and it gives me the ability to, uh, um, you know, to recognize what's going on and to have, to separate myself from it in a way that I can feel compassion without feeling the pain of what's going on with someone else has been super helpful for me. And, I, and unfortunately, I think I lost you a little bit there. I was oh. taking notes. I was <laughs> taking notes because I was, I love, you can turn your challenges into your strengths. And then there was a little bit in between that and the empath stuff that we lost you a little bit. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you want to Should share I'm, if you can. Something on my end that I can. I feel I, I'm, I'm showing that I have a connection, but I don't know what. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. You still got me? You still got, you still got me? Yeah, good. So we, we can turn our challenges into strengths. I think we just need to sit with that for a minute. It's what you choose. You can turn your well, into I, I think I think we get stuck often in a victim mindset, thinking that external things are controlling what's happening with us. It feels that way sometimes. But when, for me, when I recognize that I can't necessarily control or change what's going on out there, but I can navigate it in a different way, and in a different way, frame it in a different um, frame, <laughs> I can change how I feel about it. And when I change how I feel about it, I change all the energy around it. And that um, energy really creates the reality or the result. And it comes from awareness, you know? I mean, it's just a matter of deciding to be aware. Where did all this awareness start for you? Because I, I, I need this right now. I need <laughs> like we're in the last 45 days of school right now and I'm hearing you and I'm like, oh, oh, I need to think about how I'm dealing with that. And let me, let me. Well, aware, awareness, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of different because there's the joy in suffering, right? Suffering, accepting suffering. Thing. I really want solutions and going out, putting the effort into 
always looking under every rock. So, you know, I, I, I think that um, it's become a habit for me, almost a habit. I won't say, you know, not without fail, but almost when, when something happens that doesn't feel good, Mm-hmm. Um, I re- recently got a diagnosis with my eyesight. I, I thought that I just needed a different prescription and I kept going back and back and back and back to the optometrist. And he said, your glasses are right. You need to go see an ophthalmologist. There's something else going on. So I went to the ophthalmologist and we found out that there's a condition in my retina that there's not really a whole lot they can do. And so I see a little bit, I kind of see double. You know, and, I, and I, as I drove away from the doctor's office, I felt a lump in my throat and I decided, you know what, I'm going to let myself cry for a minute about this, but I need to see it differently because I could go down a dark hole, right? I could lose my eyesight over it or it might be fine, but I believe my cells are listening. If my cells are listening, what am I going to tell them? If they're listening, it's my job to tell them what to do. I have to find a different way of looking at this. So, um, you know, when we're suffering, it's a message to see things differently for me. Redefine it, look at it, ask yourself how you want to feel, name it because there's power in the words. What is it that I want to feel? I want to feel positive. I want to feel that there's a solution out there. I'm going to keep looking until I find it. You know, and I have found since this diagnosis with my eyes, I found in in Florida, there is a holistic ophthalmologist, a homeopathic ophthalmologist who has had great success treating this without surgery. The surgery almost guarantees cataracts and I don't want that. So first time that I really had something kind of really significant where I was within a matter of minutes, I caught myself going, okay, you have to honor the feelings when they come up. The feelings are real, you know, pushing them down makes us sick (laughs) feel and they serve a purpose and that energy, at least in looking at it, feeling it is appropriate through it. My husband sent me a, when I was going through a really tough I think Einstein. Anyway, there's just a lot, you know, a lot to be said looking at look acting. And and there's a lot to process in that from what I heard. And I, I love how you said honor your feelings, right? Because if you just push it down. It's going to still be there. So honor it, accept it, give it the space. Right. And then flip your language to what you want the outcome to be. I just always come back to that uh, clarity through contrast to make the list anymore. I used Mm -hmm. to do that. But because for so for so long now and and have uh, done so many times. And every time I walk a, a client through it, I get so much from it myself. But um, it becomes a, you know, anything you do consistently becomes a habit, just planting that seed and practicing it. You'll really find that there, that your mind is super powerful and pretty simple. You know, we think our minds are super complex. There's like a hand rules to how our mind works, which I in the group because who in light are to understand, you know, your mind is doing what it thinks you want it to do but you have to give it the instructions in the right way with clarity for it to go to work serving you. (laughs) Just like our bodies, just like it does. Give it the right, get rid of the stuff that doesn't work and give it what does and stick with it. I really feel like we have found a hidden gem in this group right now with you coming here and having a conversation with me. Like I'm so excited. So, (laughs) all right, so let's go back to your ER shred journey. So you did traditional way for 13 and a half years or so. When did you yeah. start your ER shred journey? Did you come with us right? In the when it was year? new, it was October. I was just looking back at my um, initial photos that I had in my uh, 
my album and my phone. It was October 2020. So it was so you were an original, you're an OG shredder. I was a self shredder sort of, yeah. You're an OG, you're an original because the protocol launched officially <laughs> October of 2020. I didn't I might I, have it might have been the second shred. I don't think it was the first one. I don't know exactly when it started, you're, but you're, you're you know, safe here with me because I didn't go the first time. I had to watch people. Was that you too? <laughs> I, had to I don't think I was watching anybody there. as much as I was trying to get a grasp on what it was. You know, I don't think everything was as clearly spelled out right in the very end. And I had their team. I don't want to, you know, like be in the, I don't want to, you know, get in there and, and be a part of something that I'm not really invited to be part of. I wasn't sure about all that. That's yeah, another we, thing that's so beautiful about this community is that there's no, you know, oh, whose team are you on? I was I just going to say that's been shattered a long time ago. <laughs> oh, thank God. That was but I carried that with me. I, I carried that baggage with me for a long time, you know, even though that isn't a part of the, the really isn't supposed to be part of the culture of the original company. Right. It's been really refreshing. So, how did it go? You did your first shred and how was it? It went great because I was already a pro party walking consistent. I was already doing, you know, the program the way I had always done it. I'm not sure that I had done a cleanse super recently, but I had a layer of fluff and I had, um, you know, just energy that shifted. But I felt a really big shift. I posted there's somewhere in the shrimp, but I did, did post the picture. It's nowhere near as dramatic as people who have, you know, a significant amount of weight to release. But for me, on my body, it was a very noticeable difference. It was as much of a difference after doing the program for that many years. It was as much of a difference as my original nine day, which was what I did back then as my original one. It was as profound. So you had a For similar me. results after being on the program ish. Were you, were you strict to it to the most part in those 13 years? Was it on or off? Yes. Was oh, it by the book. Oh, oh no. no. Well, for 13 years, it became a lifestyle. You know, I cleansed periodically. I had gone through a few years there, probably just before ER Shred, just being kind of, I always did my shakes. I mean, it was my lifestyle, but I yeah. never incubated a shake. I never knew about incubating a shake. That alone was a dramatic upgrade, huge. And that coupled with eating meat, and the, the simplicity of knowing exactly, you know, there's what, three or four or five things that you eat during that shred. It's so simple. And the bone broth on cleanse days. I never, I mean, in the beginning, it, cleanse days were challenging for me in the very, very beginning. But I get tired of sweet stuff on cleanse days. I'd be like, one more sweet thing in my mouth. No, the savory bone broth was so satisfying and so refreshing to have something that's not sweet tasting. Yeah. Love it. Right. Because the, the cleanse itself is sweet and then the snack wafers can be sweet for some. And then if you did and the, the ice delights were sweet. It just, it made me want mm -hmm. more food. Like, I think that's why I struggled on yeah. the older cleanse days is because everything was so sweet. I never felt that satiation that I get from the bone broth. Right? Right. Right. Crazy. You know, there's a whole protocol out there around bone broth. I broth is magic in itself. So when you put that together with incubating these shakes and getting all 450% more bang for your buck, who ever heard of such a thing? And I feel it. You know, I can feel it in... And I can see it in my arms, even without, I mean, not to knock weights because I know that that's the bomb, but <laughs> at six years old to be, to be able to see definition in my arms that I've never seen just from changing my diet is extraordinary. Oh, but doesn't society tell you you're not supposed to have that because you're getting older? 
Wasn't that the beginning of our conversation? I won't say what came through my mind. It's not, it wouldn't be nice. Yes, society, what society says. Mm, I, I feel like we're connecting back to the beginning of our call, right? <laughs> yeah. <if this. laughs> We've flipped the pyramid upside down. We're busting myths about aging and, and accepting aging, right? Because we don't have to accept it. Why should we? Well, aging doesn't be a aging is, you know, I mean, like I mean, the, the, the cliche about wine, right? You know, it, sometimes wisdom comes with age and we're a blind new wisdom, right? So true. So aging number wise is going to happen. But your presence in that journey <laughs> doesn't have to go down the path society says it's going to take you down. Well, again, the words and the inner, the words that we use and the energy behind the words, the emotions behind the word aging or aging, you know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. not it, the whole aging baby boomer demographic. It's a part of the lane for a long time because it's a massive wave of people, but uh, maturing ripening i don't know what's a great way to <laughs> i don't know what's a better way to say aging because there's that emotional connotation but aging gracefully you know i hear so many people say i don't want to age gracefully that means they don't want to you know have the traditional aging but a grace can mean you know appreciate enjoying that we get to live in right you're just continuing on your journey Hi. and you're Ripening. <laughs> Ripening. Yeah, no, I don't like that one. Take that one back. Oh, that one makes me laugh. Maturing. We're, we're, we're getting advice. Maturing. I say, oh, you know, we're constantly evolving. <laughs> we'll we'll evolving. figure out That's what that word one. later. Right? <laughs> because we're going to continue to grow. Somebody's like, got the word. Are. Share it. <laughs> yeah. You know, things aren't what they were 30 years ago. You know, that right. that lovely pyramid came out. We know that's wrong. That was right? a marketing thing. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was all about the wheat lobby or something. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. We are becoming cultured. There you go. <laughs> I like a pearl. <laughs> like a pearl. There we go. But it's. But it's just showing us that like you, like you've shared earlier, we're constantly learning and we're constantly growing. Science is changing and we're going to follow that science as it changes, as long as it's good science and we can see it backed up and we have proof of concept of it. Um, I think we have some proof of concept on this one. I don't know. Do you think we have yeah, proof to me, of concept the proof in is in the personal the proof is in the experience. You know what I love seeing about the results that they're getting like with good numbers and your number on the thing, but that's fascinating. I mean, that is really paradigm busting stuff. I yes. love that. Paradigm busting. I love that because paradigm is one of those words that I just gives me twitches, but that's because of education. Oh yeah. <laughs> and when that comes out in professional development, it twitches, but you're right. I'll accept it here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes there's just those words that you hear in a meeting and it just has a bad connotation to it. Yeah. I thought I'm working on flipping. I have got to work on flipping those words and embracing those words in a different context. Right. The energy, the energy behind it. Yep. yep. Yeah. There, there's the some difference. energy I'm going to have to work on releasing behind some words. Yeah. You know, one of the words that's fascinating to me is shred because shred can mean so many different things, you know, I mean, it can mean get, you know, get your six packs ripped or it can mean like shredding the, the contrast side of your clarity through contrast list. I mean, it's got, it, it can have a lot of different energy, right? No, I can't, I can't wait to practice that exercise. 
You know, once the seed is planted, uh, you'll probably find that your what I found was that my mind just keeps doing it because it's kind of it's it's empowering to turn a negative to a positive and feel the energy that goes along. There is so much energy. There is so much energy. So is there anything else on your heart that you want to share with our, our shred community? Because I feel like you've given us so much knowledge tonight and so many strategies and ideas. So what is it that your biggest three tips to shredders would be? Um, for me, one of the big ones that I, that really just got clarified for me today, as I was thinking about this call is that, um, goals, I hear, I know the word goals comes up and the concept of goal setting comes up a lot. Um, I started listening to a, a book on audible today, atomic habits. And he talked about how goals are not really, have you read that or heard it? Goals yeah. are not really all they're cracked up to be. It's the systems, you know, focus on the system rather than the goal. Getting clear on where you want to go or who you want to be really or what you want to be is cool, is cool. Having that vision, mm -hmm. having the energy around that vision. But focusing on the system is the day-to-day -day habit that gets you to where you want to go because there's no failure in that. So often we set a goal we don't achieve and then we beat ourselves. Failure um, didn't get where I wanted to be. Um, of suck us back down a hole really profound one for me just being mindful of um where you want to where you want to go and knowing that it's attainable i mean if anything er shred shows us that be what we want to be if we are willing to follow the system um I think um, just for me, like if you feel if you feel isolated doing it this this at home, where <laughs> my block food love, oh, please. But you know, you know, food is love, and this food is great love. You know, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be sugar to to be love feel this way um that I, I think around with with the little circle whether it's your family but just knowing that your love true to your your health and your body your desire to be what it is that you want to it's not a I know me sometimes I compromise that I have the tool in my toolbox to store amongst people in the world. Um, it, it for me it just it just brings that I love myself. That's why I'm doing deprivation. This is anything but. You know, it's mm -hmm. abundance. <laughs> it is absolutely abundance, 100%. So I want to, once again, thank you for coming on here and, and coming into the spotlight where I know you didn't necessarily want to be, but I do believe that there's a lot in this call that people are going to be able to take back from it. So I have one more question for you. For those who are feeling not ready to share their stories, because they're in that place, what would you say to them? Well, I would say what you said to me. You know, you know, if you're feeling doing this, how grateful are you to the to the person or the circumstances that brought you to it? And what about the people out there who will connect with doing this through your story? I mean. We all have them and we have a lot of common ground. Everybody on your stuff, but your story is golden. Even if it like, you know, seems a little huge to someone else. Yeah. And you're giving me goosebumps because it really is. You don't know who you reach. Like I've got a lot to think about on my journey now from this call, from, from what you shared tonight. 
And, and I would encourage you to keep showing up and sharing these tips and tricks and ideas and strategies to help our shutters on that mindset component, because we, you know how important that is. I'm becoming more aware of it and I'm, I, I'm internalizing that and I'm working on that moving forward. So once again, I know it's the top of the hour, so I want to respect everyone's time. Tomorrow night, I will be filling in for Captain Caveman on the Come Alive call. So if you're not ready to share your story for an hour, but you want to share just a few minutes of your journey, reach out to me. Let me know. I will be happy to get you in a call in the next few weeks because I'll be covering while they're on vacation. Thank you once again, Carolyn, for coming tonight and sharing. And have a great night, everybody. We'll catch you on the next call.